In this video, I'm going to define what it means for an equation to be separable and show you a technique for solving equations of that type. So much like uh, integrating factors was uh, kind of a backward product rule, separable equations can be solved using a backward chain rule. So separable equations, and I'm not going to define what a separable equation is first. Let me just go through the basic idea. So um, let's just do a little refresher of what the chain rule tells us. If we have a function, let's say e to the y, and y is a function of t, and I take the time derivative of that, what are we going to get here? So um, I'd like you to take a second and write that down. Uh, make sure you remember. Maybe I'll give you some options here. So is the derivative here e to the y? e to the y times dy dt, uh, y times e to the y minus 1, or e to the y minus 1, y times dy dt. So which one of those? So you think about that for a second. Okay, so if I was taking a derivative with respect to y, then this would be the correct one. But I'm taking a derivative with respect to t, so there's a chain rule. e to the y, if it wasn't a function of t, that its derivative would be e to the y, but then the chain rule tells me I multiply by dy dt. So that's why this one is going to be the correct, or is the correct answer. Uh, y e to the y minus 1. This is true when you have a function like x cubed. You bring the power down, but not right in this context. And then finally, this one is just a mix of using this incorrect derivative of e to the y with what looks like a chain rule there. Okay, so correct answer there is um, e to the y of t multiplied by dy dt. So, um, so that's the, the core of the chain rule that I'm going to take advantage of when solving separable equations. So, um, so let's try and solve the following equation. Let's say we have an equation dy dt, and I'm going to switch to a y prime uh, at some point here because I don't want to keep on writing all that out is equal to e to the y e to the minus y times t squared. So this is where I can define what it means for an equation to be separable. If I have a right hand side that is a function of y and a function of t, but in a way that separates, in other words they're multiplied by each other, then I can bring the y part of it over to the other side and I get e to the y dy dt and I leave the t part on this side. And so this we just we just saw is actually the derivative, I guess I'm not switching to, e, to the prime notation. Um, so the derivative of e to the y of t, well, I'm not putting that of t in, in the rest of this, so I'll leave it out, even though it's implicitly there. And that is equal to t squared. I'm just rewriting this expression here, going backwards through um, the chain rule. And now I can take an antiderivative and I get e to the y is equal to, and I'm taking an antiderivative with respect to t. So the time derivative disappeared here, so I have to take an antiderivative with respect to t here. Okay, I'm never dealing with derivatives or antiderivatives with respect to y. And so, um, so now what I get is uh, one third t cubed plus an arbitrary constant. And there is that arbitrary constant that's always creeping in somewhere during a solution technique in these first order equations. And so, um, so now we have um, a solution, or at least we can write down a solution. Um, y is equal to natural log of one third t cubed plus c. And that plus c has to be inside the brackets. This is, this is not an anti, a straight up antiderivative where you end up just having a plus c at the end. It ends up getting sort of mixed in to the function in a more complicated way most of the time, almost always in, in differential equations. Okay, so the general idea here is that we start off with some uh, some equation dy dt, and it's equal to, here we have some function of y, 
multiplied by some other function of t. And I can, because it's a product like this, I can separate it. And what I, first what I, I want to do here before I go on is actually I'm going to rename the function of, um, of y 1 over h of y times g of t. And now you can see that it, it's really, um, I, I was going to divide by f, but instead I'm multiplying by h just so that it looks a little cleaner. So I have this h of y equal dy dt, sorry, h of y dy dt is equal to g of t. And now the big question here is, can I take an antiderivative on both sides? Do I know the antiderivative of a little h of y, and I, do I know one for g? And if I do, then I can write those down. So I'm just going to take an antiderivative on this side and make that capital H of y, and that's going to be equal to capital G of t, where I'm using the capital letter to mean antiderivative. And then I always put in a plus c, one side or the other, it doesn't matter which, but by tradition I put it on the t side. And so that is um, that is the overall form. Now if we're lucky, then we can solve this for y by inverting the function h. And in this example down here, we saw we inverted the exponential function to get the log function, but in general it looks like this. y of t is equal to if possible, right? Not, not always going to be possible to do this inversion, but at least in the, in the previous line you get an implicit expression. And so that's what we're end up with. So this is just a formal, general way of writing down what I did on this side here. Okay, so let me do some examples. So the first one here, I'm going to um, give you an equation y prime equal minus x over y. And you'll notice the variable here, I've switched it. This is on purpose. I want to make sure you think um, sort of broadly about variables here. So it, it, I haven't, I have a prime there and there's no t. Let's just assume then that the prime is a derivative with respect to x because that's the only other variable appearing in the equation. So um, in this case, you can see that this is already separable in the form of a fraction like this guy up here. And so I can rewrite this as y times y prime equal minus x. And then now I have to figure out what is the antiderivative of the thing in front of the y prime, because going backwards through a chain rule, I get um, 1 half y squared is equal to, and on this side, I get minus 1 half x squared plus a c. And I can multiply through by 2 and bring this over, so I'll get y squared plus x squared is equal to 2 times c. Now, c is just some arbitrary constant, um, and so I can switch my arbitrary constants to a new name and it absorb the 2. And I may never care now about what c is. Now, I'm gonna, if I ever get an initial condition, I have to figure out what d is, and I don't worry about c. So basically, what I've just found is that um, if I think of d as uh, something squared, my solutions all lie on a circle. Okay, so that's what's going on here. And if you think about what that means, in the original equation, we can see why that is on a circle. So obviously, if, if y is going to be a function of x, we have to ignore one part of it. So maybe we ignore the bottom or the top. Let's just say we ignore the bottom for now. So the derivative at the point here is going to have a slope that's perpendicular to the line through the origin along the radius. And so the derivative here, the slope here at this point the slope of this line is just going to be y over x. That's the slope of this line. And so this line here has to have a negative reciprocal minus x over y, which is exactly what we see in the derivative here. The derivative is equal to minus x over y. So that's actually not surprising. We should have been able to see that had we been sort of clever before we started. But now we can see it um, by getting an actual expression for the solution. Now, if I ever want to solve an initial condition, let's say I, I, I tell you that y of 0 is equal to minus 1. So if I had continued and solved y equal square root of d minus x squared, I'd run into trouble because I can never make this negative with that square root expression. And so I actually want to use this expression here, the implicit one, 
to solve some initial conditions because I'm trying to solve an initial condition that's down here, which this expression totally ignores. Okay. Okay. So I'll I'll uh, I'll cut that off there and um, go on with uh, maybe some more examples and some other ideas in a subsequent video.